Just look at the smoothness. Look how vibrant this print is. And this is plasticine ink. The truth about screen printing wet ink. It kinda sucks. It's a beginner screen printer worst nightmare because all those influencers that you see on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube make it look so easy. And it is for them because they have experience. But don't worry, because I got your back. But before we start, make sure to hit that like button because it motivates me to keep pushing content. Anyways, let's get back to work. All right, let me explain why prepping your white ink is very important. First, it is the most used ink out of all of them. I use the white ink five times more than I use my color ink. For example, whenever you're printing on a color t-shirt and you want your colors to look nice and vibrant, you add a white on the base. And I print a lot of color t-shirts. Also, if you're printing white ink on a dark garment and you want the design to pop, you add a second layer of white ink. On top of that, whenever you have to mix to make your own custom Pantone color, most of the time you use white ink. And here's a small example. Whenever you wanna make gray ink, you grab white ink and you put a little bit of black ink in there and you start to stir it up. If the ink is too dark, you add a little bit more white ink. If the ink is too light, you add a little bit more of black ink until you get the color that you're looking for. And this is just a small example. Because a real screen printer never buys gray ink. I'm just joking, that's one of my teachers that used to tell me that. But he was right, because I have never bought gray ink after that. But anyways, let's talk about the most common mistakes that I see a beginner do. And yes, I'm included as well. And after that, I'm gonna show you how to fix those mistakes. So make sure to watch the full video. First, we have to understand that most of the white inks, they come thick. And when the temperature drops, you know when the room is colder, the ink gets thicker. And one of the biggest mistakes that I did when I started screen printing was just grabbing the ink straight from the bucket and put it on top of the screen. And that's a no-no. Another big mistake that I see a lot is using the wrong mesh to print on white ink. That's a no-no. And let's just say you're printing a big bold design on a high mesh screen. You will have to work double or even triple to try to get that thick white ink to uh, deposit all the way through to get a nice vibrant look. And you might not even get the result that you're looking for. Now, if you wanna learn how to pick the right mesh for the right project, I did a video last week, right here, that goes more into depth with this whole process. So go check it out. Another mistake that I had to go through was trying to print the white ink when it was cold. Just flooding the screen was super hard and rough. The ink would turn into like a glue, and it won't deposit all the way through. And there's times where um, the ink will get stuck to the shirt, and when you pop off the screen, the shirt will pop right with it. So cold ink is a no-no. And these are just common, basic, small mistakes that you can fix like that. All right, this is the ink that I use. It's called Legacy White from International Coated. It is made for 100% cotton fabrics, and it's a plasticizer ink. And if you didn't know, that's all I work with, plasticizer inks. You could also order pre-made inks that are made for uh, cotton and polyester, 50-50. But I personally like to buy them separately, 100% cotton and 100% polyester, and then prep the inks myself. Well, at least most of the time I do. But we'll talk about this at the end of this video. And just know that white ink is so scandalous. So make sure to use some gloves, especially when you're about to start prepping it. We're gonna start with the most simplest step that you can do to get the ink nice and soft. And it's a super simple step. And that's stirring it. Yeah, take it easy. I know you're looking at me like, really Milo, really? But just watch. I also want you to understand that a lot of these white inks are different. Some come thin, some come thicker. Me personally, I like when my inks are nice and thick because it gives me the full control to see how my design is gonna look. If I want my design to be vibrant, then I have the full control to uh, adjust the ink to my uh, preference. But if the inks come thin, and I want the design to look nice and vibrant, I have no control over that. The only way to uh, solve that problem would be to add another layer of ink so the design could be nice and, and opaque. All right, so this is what I do. I grab an extra container, right? Then I'll add some ink to the container. And I won't go all the way. I usually do halfway or a little bit under halfway. So whenever I'm mixing the inks, it won't be rough, especially if, uh, like let's say the room is cold and you fill it up all the way, it's harder to stir. Now, halfway, right? And we stir and we stir. And we don't just stir for like good 10, 30 seconds, no. You stir for like at least two minutes. To make sure everything is nice and soft. This is one way to soften up that white ink. And whether you believe me or not, this is a very simple small step that makes a huge, huge difference. Just look, sheesh. Now, if your ink is still hard, here's another thing that you can do to make it softer. 
you add some reducer. What's a reducer? Reducer is an adjective that you add to your ink to make it smoother. And there's a small formula that you can use to get good results. You add 5% of the reducer to whatever ink you have in the container. But I'll be honest, I don't use that formula. I just go with how the ink looks and feels. Now I'm gonna show you how I prep my inks without editing or cutting this clip or this video. So we already have half of this pen full, full with ink. So what I do, I'll grab some reducer. Now just throw a little bit in there. Throw a little bit in there. Then I'll start to stir. Not much. It starts to stir. If the ink starts to become too thin, then I will add more white ink to it. To get a to get a nice uh thick, soft uh texture, if that makes sense. And if it's too uh if it's too thick still, then I'll keep adding reducer until I get the right texture. But I'll, I'll explain what will happen if you add too much reducer to the ink after I'm done with this. So you keep stirring, you keep stirring. You keep stirring. And I always like to start with half of the ink like I, like I just explained. I can't talk, like I just explained because it's easier to, uh, to stir than when you have everything so full and then you start to make a mess and all that. Now, we just keep adding white ink until we we uh, fill this whole thing up. Little by little, take your time. If you're a beginner, take your time. Now the garage right now is hot. So everything is nice and smooth. But if the garage, when the garage gets cold, I use a little bit more reducer to uh, thin everything up. You see how I add a very little? And then I keep stirring until this is full. Now I have different techniques for more experience. Uh, for more experiences, um, experienced screen printers, but this is a beginner video. So right now, I want you to take it easy and learn. Feel the, feel the softness, feel the texture. And that's it, that's pretty much it. My ink is now ready to go. Look at this, look at this smoothness. And we're gonna put it to work, so make sure to watch this video all the way to the end. And here's a small close up so you can have an idea how your ink should be. How the texture of the ink should be. Look at look at the smoothness. It's still thick, but it's not too thick. You know, and it's thin, but it's not too thin. It's right on the money. If that makes any type of sense. Now, let me explain why adding too much reducer to your ink is not good. The reducer thins the ink. And if the ink is too thin, the opacity will be low. It will be transparent. And you don't want the ink to be transparent. You want the ink to be white. So adding 5% of reducer to the ink is just a standard way. Sometimes you need to add less and sometimes more. And that's just my way of doing it. If anybody knows of a better technique, please let me know in the comments. I'm always open to learn. And we're still not done. We still have one more step to get the best results. And that's to warm up your ink. And I'm gonna show you three easy ways to do it. First, you put your ink under your flash dryer and you just let it sit there for a couple minutes. And if you don't have a flash dryer, you should go get one because it's a must for screen printing. Second, you add the ink to the screen and you hover it over the flash dryer. And the heat of the flash will rise up and warm it up. Third, you warm up your platens and then you hover the screen over the platens and the heat of the platens will rise up and warm up the ink. Same thing as step number two. And these are super simple steps that anybody can use. Now I'm gonna show you how I use them. Step one, I usually use it before I prep my inks because it makes the ink softer. Step two, I usually use this step when I have to uh, like walk away from the press. It helps me kind of multitask. Like I'm warming up the ink and I'm counting my shirts before I can start printing, if that makes any sense. Step three comes to play when I'm about to start printing. Because you have to be here present whenever you're doing this because you don't want to burn the platens. And like I said before, these are very, very simple steps that could go a long way. Now, let's put the ink to work. And this is something that I forgot to mention. Before printing, you want to grab the ink. You just want to just move it around, break it apart like this. Move it around to make sure it's nice and soft. And this is really easy to be honest. Like I, like I always say, screen printing is 
So now rock is sand. This takes a little bit of adjustments to get the best results. To get the best results, practice, practice, practice. So at the end of the day, this is just repetition after repetition after repetition. Just look at the smoothness. Look at how vibrant this print is. And this is plastic. And let's just have a small review. If you want your white ink to be soft, the first step will be to stir that ink. If it's still hard, add some reducer. And if it's still hard, warm it up. And it's really that simple, to be honest. And here's why I don't buy 50-50 inks. Well, I do, but lately, I just have it. First, 70% of all the t-shirts that I print are 100% cotton. So 100% cotton ink gives me the best result. And whenever I have to print something that has polyester and cotton, I just prep the inks myself. To me, that's more easier. And I know I didn't cover everything that has to do with white ink, but I feel like at least I got the basics. Once again, thank you guys so much for the love and the support. Keep asking questions in the comments because that's where I get my ideas from, my video ideas from. Have a beautiful day and God bless you all. And if you're new to the channel, this is my shop. Nothing fancy. I have a four car garage. See? We had a storm here on, I think it's like, Seven days ago and that light went out. And it's not the light, it's like the whole ballast. I don't really know what it is, I gotta call the electrician. It's a very simple shop, but uh, I'm grateful for it. Grateful for every square inch. And that's Suka right there. So go! Slimpy. <whistles>